Hey everyone, welcome back. Or if you're new to the channel, my name's Chris. I'm standing here in front of my portable sawmill. It's the Woodland Mills HM126. And the idea for a video that I had today was sort of a how to use this or how to operate this to turn a log into some lumber. So if you've just started doing your research, maybe you're kind of looking at different brands of portable sawmills, or maybe you've honed in on this model and you're just looking for a bit more information, I thought it might be helpful to some people just starting out or just getting involved in the idea of sawmilling to make a video kind of like sawmilling 101 with this particular mill and just take you through each step uh, as closely and as detailed as possible so hopefully by the end of the video if you didn't really have much of an idea how to use one of these or um, in particular to use this uh, Woodland Mills HM126 sawmill here that by the end of this video maybe you'll have a lot better idea of how this works, how it operates, and how it can turn a log into some lumber for you. And as you do a bit more research, or if you own a sawmill and have done sawmilling before, you'll understand that the steps that I am showing you now aren't necessarily a one, two, three order that you have to do them in. Um, I, there's people do lot these steps a lot in different orders, but mostly the steps are the same. Um, I'm gonna start by getting a log up on the bunk. Some other people might start by, you know, getting their blade tensioned upright and getting the mill warmed up. Um, we'll have to go through all the steps. Some people might do some first before others, but just as long as you know that, um, I'm gonna get started by putting a log up on the bunk straight now, and we'll take it from there. So with the Woodland Mills sawmill, these are your log stops. This is what stops the log from rolling off the end of the sawmill on this back side that I'm standing on right now. Uh, they ship you, I believe, two of these bigger ones and two of these smaller ones. And they are for what's probably a pretty obvious reason that these are meant to hold really big logs and these are to hold smaller logs because i'm cutting some smaller cedar today i'm just gonna stick with the small ones okay so i said i'd try to keep this as basic as possible so the first thing um just in case this is your first time ever watching a sawmill video these green cross pieces that go across the mill those are your bunks and that's what your logs going to sit on Everyone except for the very first and last bunk has these green square tubes welded on and that is what your stops slide into so that a log can't roll off the mill. So the length of your log is going to determine where you put the stops on your uh, side of your bunks here and I'm going to start today with a smaller log. Uh, it'll probably end up being just over eight feet or it could even be 10 feet but uh i'll grab that grab a log in the min in a minute but the point is that obviously you can't have you need two stops for the log to sit against so if you grab an eight foot log you can't have these 10 feet apart because it'll just roll right through the middle obviously so i'm gonna go here and then i'm gonna skip one and put it put one in the next one after that so that'll leave i think the bunks are 38 and a half inches apart i just measured them so you know if i put one here skip one and then put one in that leaves them just over six feet apart so i know that an eight or ten foot log will roll right up against them so the idea is you want to tighten this clamp down like that and then I'm gonna go down there and do the same thing and then that'll give me a spot to stop the log once I roll it up on the bunks here. So you can see I got the one down there, I've skipped one, and now I'm just gonna raise this one up a bit and tighten it down. And then that gives me my two stops for the log to roll against. So that's all there is to that. Um, now that allows me to get my log rolled up on here without fear of it rolling off the end. I'm just using a set of four wheeler ramps right now and a can't hook to get this log up on the mill. 
There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I know a lot of people prefer some kind of loader and if you're doing some big heavy hardwood logs it's you can even do this with those but uh, you know if, if you're gonna be doing a lot of big hardwood stuff you definitely uh, would probably benefit from having some sort of loading system better than this but for these lately little cedar logs I don't know I just this is a hobby for me and I kind of enjoy just using these hand tools and doing it like that but um, everybody has their own preferences of how to get the log onto the mill this is just one of mine and I don't think there's any right or wrong answer for that now that we have the log loaded up on the bunks it's important to note that there is always the potential that the log could still roll back off this way because it's not clamped on yet so if you have a very heavy log that you're worried about rolling off now might be the time to clamp it down on this side as well this is a pretty light cedar log that i'm not really worried about rolling off right now so what i'm going to do next is get this positioned on the bunks the way that i want it and then clamp it down but just remember that's kind of one of the steps that uh if you are worried about it rolling off get it clamped right away and then maybe figure the next part out uh you know and while you're thinking about it you're nice and safe so what i mean by getting this log sitting on the mill right is that a log is rarely a perfectly round cylinder that runs straight there's usually some curves and bends and some ends are bigger than the other end usually um, so right now you might not be able to see it i know it never shows up as well on camera but the this end of the log kind of goes up like this and you just want to kind of look at the log and see where all the bends are um, this is the one big one that's in it right now so for me i think i might be better off spinning it something like that um again this is kind of one of those situations where it's more there's no one way to do it it's more of a judgment call um you have to take each log is unique so you kind of have to take them one at a time and as you get more experienced you'll get to know how to maximize the amount of lumber coming out of it um if there's any big bends i prefer to try to get them going horizontally if possible and that's because the next thing i'm going to do is try to get the pith which is kind of like the center point of the log um so if you can picture all the rings going around i have a camera here i'll show you what I, exactly what i mean <laughs> Okay guys, that's better, eh? Better for a visual. So you can see all the rings going around, 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 around until right in the middle here, there's this one point that everything's grown out from. That's the pith. And why that is so important is that the reason that I had it explained to me is that you really want to get the pith from one end of the log to the other end of the log lined up level with your sawmill blade so that if you were to picture cutting straight through the middle of the log you would want your blade to enter right where the pith is on one side of the log and exit where the pith is on the other side of the log and you have to go by the pith because it's not necessarily always right in the very center of the log i've come across some where they're off center kind of thing but you want to go by the pith and it was explained to me that that is how the tree naturally grew so that is kind of the line it's always going to want to follow even after you cut it into a board so if you were to say not worry about it and just start cutting through and if you're kind of cutting on a bit of an angle to the pith once that board comes off it's naturally want, gonna want to kind of what it thinks is 
straighten back out to where it was before but what's actually going to happen is the boards you're cutting are all going to warp and that's one of the big reasons although not the only reason you, you end up with warped lumber so i'm going to get the piths lined up on either side again there's probably more than one way to do this but i'm going to show you the the strategy that i use so i usually just grab something that is a straight edge that i can lay right across the track like so which is usually a piece of lumber because let's be honest this is a sawmill and there's usually quite a bit of this stuff laying around and what i do is just simply take a tape measure and measure this end which is nine and three quarters and you can probably see where i'm going with this i'm going to go to the other end and check that out and we'll check this side seven and three quarters so we're two inches lower from center to center down there so you can see a perfect example of why it's important to check that uh, off the start because if I was to just start cutting through how it's sitting now I'd be two inches from one end to the other going on an angle to the pith and that would give me a very good chance that the boards coming off would warp you might not notice it right away uh, sometimes you do notice it right away I've had um, logs where I've cut and the second the blade comes through you can just see it almost want to pop right off there There's so much tension on it, but uh, Sometimes you might not see it right away, but you come back a few, a few days or a few weeks later and you've got a bent board So it's always good to take these few extra minutes and make sure that you're doing this part Okay guys to raise this end of the log up. I'm gonna use what they call a tow board you can get this from Woodland Mills, um, but if you're like me and you originally didn't have one of these, this is basically just like a jack to jack up the end of the log. Um, you'll see how it works in a minute, but if you're like me and originally you didn't have one of these, um, you can do what I did and that's, uh, you can kind of just have some blocks and shims of wood and just lift the one end of the log up and slide some blocks and shims under it and that will like accomplish the same result basically. But this just has the hook on one end there that just slides into the track. So you just slide it in like that, it sets down. And then there is a spot you can put like a socket and a drill on if you want, or it just comes with this handy dandy tool that I, have no problem using and you just kind of crank it up like this with the jack and I know that we were about two inches lower on this side so I'm just gonna kind of take a guess come back to my tape measure here and I'm at nine and a half up one little more turn so I mean I'm within a sixteenth of three quarters so I'm pretty happy with that there now but I'm just gonna come back and check this other end again to see if it's shifted at all and it has so as you can see you just play around with it a little bit I'm about an eighth of an inch off right now. So if I just go back a tiny little turn, I'm gonna be happy enough with that. So now that you've got your log all lined up and you know that your blade is gonna be running parallel to the pith of the log, I'm gonna clamp it into place with these Woodland Mills quick log clamps. Just double check that your log is tight against the bunks on the back side. And then these are pretty simple to use. Um, I'm gonna start off just by putting it basically right in the center, the high point, if you will. Just give her a couple taps, make sure it's tight. And then you just clamp it down like that. And that holds it nice and steady. So that's basically the process of getting the log ready to get cut. Now we'll head up to the head of the mill. 
should go without saying if you've uh, ever owned any kind of small engine that the first thing you'd want to do is just check make sure you have gas and oil obviously then after that you're always supposed to loosen the tension off of the blade when you're not using it they say that it will leave a flat spot and then that can cause vibrations and whatnot so basically they say you want your blade just proud of the back of each wheel um, I have found that my blade always seems to ride just a bit further back on the drive wheel than this wheel here but I was kind of a little concerned when I very first got the mill but you know I've been running it for eight months or whatever like that now and it always runs good so I've just come kind of come to accept that's how mine works but anyways you just want to you know get it lined up with your fingers so we'll just loosen it off a bit so in case you can't exactly see but you can see right up above it it shows you proper tension and no tension and the yellow part there they're referring to is just this little piece right here so if you just watch you just kind of turn it in until you get right flush so hopefully you can see on camera but I've been turning it in and you can even just feel with your fingers I'll go with that is being right flush and then from there you just want to like spin it around a few times with your hand and just as you're doing that just really keep an eye on the blade to make sure it's not riding backwards or forwards on either of the band wheels and as long as you spin it around a few times by hand and everything seems to be staying put as far as going backwards or forwards on the band wheels then you should be good you can also just check your belt there for tension with your hands they say you should be able to give it about a quarter inch push play with it up and down um, i do also have a video on changing the blade if that's something you want to see i think it's number 13 but um, i'm not going to go through that in this video since i've already went through it all in a separate video but after you've got that all checked up you can close up the doors again and then uh, we'll go take a look at starting it up i guess the only other thing i'll mention is this is your lubrication tank a lot of people use soap and water if it's going to be above freezing for sure um, a, a lot of people including me use windshield washer fluid if it's going to be around freezing or below um, i would suggest not risking water if you think it's going to be anywhere around freezing because the lines that take the water down are very small and they will freeze up very easily so if you think it's going to be around freezing at all just use some windshield washer fluid um i've also heard some people trying to mix water and windshield washer fluid and it still freezes up so just a recommendation if you don't mind spending a few extra dollars to saw when it's cold out to rather be safe than sore use the windshield washer fluid so it's a Kohler motor you can see it's labeled right here choke on and off gas on and off um, so I'm gonna put the choke on gonna put the gas on and give her a pull or two and hopefully she'll fire up for me well I gotta say I'm pretty impressed first pull I've been using it a lot in the really cold weather <coughs> so it's actually probably plus it's above freezing right now plus two or three or something so 
that's Celsius, like two or three Celsius, uh, so just above freezing. And uh, I just fired up first full, so that's some encouraging signs for the summertime. Here's your hour meter, you can see 36.3. So that's 33, 36.3 engine hours that I've personally put on this sawmill. So that makes me still pretty much a beginner, I think, but uh, you'd be surprised how much lumber you can cut in that, uh, that amount of time. I, I've cut a pile of lumber, so I'm pretty impressed with by that number. Okay guys, so we're ready to make our first pass. What you have here is your tape measures. Um, I'm not gonna get too into the difference. There's two different tape measures. Um, I could probably make a whole video just on the tape measures, but for right now, let's just focus on this tape measure. Um, it's the easiest to understand. It is basically just the same as a tape measure like this. So the way that this sawmill is set up is this tape measure reads the distance that the blade is from the top of the bunks. So if I go down with my tape measure right now, from the top of the bunk that the log is sitting on up to the bottom of the blade, it should be at seven inches. So if I go down here and double check, or sorry, I made a mistake there. Yeah, there, that's seven inches. So yeah, I cranked it up to seven inches there. So now if I go down and check, you can see I'm right at seven inches. I hope you can see that. Right on seven inches from the top of the bunk to the bottom of my saw blade. And I guess I should have uh, explained, um, if you're very new to the sawmill, this handle here is how you move the saw head up and down and with it the blade, so you just push it in like this. It locks. There's this bolt here that you can move in and out to adjust the tension and it locks into each one of these slots so that when you get it to your desired height you lock it in there and then as you're sawing there's no way that it can uh, go rogue on you and move up or down so you can see as I turn forward it raises the saw head up and as I turn backwards it right lowers it down so um, having said all that what I'm gonna do is just kind of come up to the log here and you can kind of see now there this is another area where there's a lot of different ways that you could figure out where you want to make your first pass I usually just do it by eye so I can see that you know Somewhere around there is probably where I'm gonna make my first cut. And I usually just come back up, check the tape measure, and um, I like to just keep it simple and go in, you know, one inch increments or wh whatever you're cutting. So I'll just even lower it down a tiny little bit. So I know that I'm starting off right at 10 inches. So that's where I'm gonna make my first pass. Um, there's not really much to this. I'm not going to be able to talk to you while I'm doing it, but, uh, you just start the motor. Here's your throttle here. You just press it down. That gets the blade rolling and then you just push it through the log. And usually, uh, like a lot of other machines, you can kind of tell by hearing the RPMs of the motor, watching the blade, whether you're going too fast or not. It, it You get the hang of it pretty quickly, but I'm gonna start it up now and make my first pass through the, the log. 